Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined by Gary as always. It's me, Paul Nealon, your host, and we're here basically to. It's a new week after the worst worst week in Irish football. Um, I suppose I did a video on, on Friday, kind of going like, where do we go now? And even kind of still over the weekend, I still don't know where we go from here. Um, you've seen a lot of stuff in your time supporting Ireland, but uh, this surely has to be the lowest of the low. Yeah, well, it's obviously, it is a major low point. I mean, I, I don't think we know yet. And I mean, maybe one of the most concerning things was the auditors actually saying they weren't even signing off as if, as, as if the FAI is a going concern. Now, I don't think this is going to happen, but they seem to be implying the FAI could go bust. Now, I can't see that happening. I don't think UEFA will allow that to happen. I, I don't think the government will allow it to happen, and it's very heartening to see the government are going to relent and give at least two million in grants. They're, they're, they're finding some way not to give it to the FAI, but it will go to football, which is all that matters. Yeah, I've seen Shane Ross saying that it's going to try and go through a third party because they don't trust the FAI, basically. Well, and I think actually in some ways that's wrong now because the FAI, you, anyone can see where, I mean, the actual amount of money the government were giving to football was quite small if you compare it to something like horse racing. But you can actually see where the money is going and there's significantly more than the government grants were actually going into these programmes. Now, having said that, I mean... Clearly, the finances were incredibly badly managed. I mean, there's no question about that. But the amount of money given to football in this country is really tiny. And that's actually another question mark, which a, a proper functioning FAI should be actually quench, questioning. I mean, over 80 million to horse racing and 2.9 million to football. I mean, anyway, that's, that just doesn't add up. And it just shows the power of certain lobbies. Um, I read as well as that um, they gave the GAA 30 million as well. Yeah. And they didn't even ask for it. So, <laughs> and I mean, the GAA certainly have have plenty of money, you know, and as do the IRFU. Um, yeah, and I mean, I think that's where probably where the FAI uh, should be uh, fighting the corner and arguing with the government, and, and hopefully we'll get back to that situation in the future. Um, having said that, I mean, it, yeah, it, it was a very dark day. And I mean, the, the, the whole sport in this country is being held up to ridicule at the moment. Yeah, I think, I, mean, I think, well, I haven't heard any other kind of countries laughing at us. And I don't think it's a laughing or laughable situation, but we are pretty much at this point in time a laughing stock of the football world. Like, you know, every, Every couple of weeks or every couple of months, there's some new story coming out, and just people are like, people aren't even surprised by it. Yeah. It's um, you know, coming out. And Mark Toys constantly bashing out stories and stuff like that of um, you know, money gone on personal parties and so on. We we've all read them by yeah. now, you know, and it's just people just must be looking from the outside looking in, going, you know, how did how did they get away with stuff like that? You know, it it. I don't know, but can, I don't know. can you kind of simplify for the fans? Because I know there's a lot of younger fans who just don't have a clue what's basically going on. Um, so I just think you might be able to put it, put it in a more simpler term than what was basically happened. Okay, well, I don't know if I can. I mean, I'm not a, a financial expert either or an accountant. But um, basically, the FEI has, for a number of years, been running up a debt. And... It had to and masking it, it really. masking it. It had, I mean, it had been claiming we're making a profit. So the, the, the last six or seven years of accounts had actually shown uh, making a profit every year, and there was a claim we were going to be debt free by 2020. But 2020 is only a couple of weeks away. Yeah. And the reality is now we're going to go into 2020 55 million, possibly more actually, because the 2019 accounts haven't been. Restated yet, or stated, and I yeah. imagine there's more even. Well, there's the cozy uh, odd KOSI. Yeah. Um, not KSI, but those YouTube fans out okay. right there. Um, but they, they still have to uh, get those as well. You know, they haven't been, I suppose, given to the public or anything like that. Uh, they're still getting investigated by other stuff. Like, it's just a total, total shambles. And 
I said it like on even on air with Today FM the other day, like it's a shame because there's so many good people in the FAI, you know, that weren't at, not at board level, but you know, under that kind of spiraling down, they they go in there. They, I don't know, like people say they're on not that good of money. I don't know what wages they're getting. I never asked, but you know. For the work they do, either way, they, they do. Yeah, I mean, and, and this is even going back to my point about the, the, the government funding. I mean, yeah, there is so much good work, and you can actually see it all around the country with all the programs that are happening, all the work going on in all the clubs. And, uh, I mean, it's... And, and sport, it's just so important. I mean, we can talk about it as fans, but, I mean especially for young people, it, it's physical activity, it's health, it's exercise. I mean, football is the biggest sport in the country. It's the most played sport by a significant margin. More played than GAA rugby combined. Now, and the, the amount of money being put into that, even by the FAI and by the people working in these programmes, is significant. And that work does go on. And that work is there and it's obvious. And, and I'm delighted to hear the government are going to give at least the two million. I, I, I think they should be giving a lot more. Um, if you look at sports like horse racing and greyhound, greyhound racing, greyhound, I mean, not to mind, anyway, I'm not going to even go into all the cruelty to animals and all that yeah. stuff that was exposed. They get something like six or seven times what football get. I mean, it's a joke. I mean, it really is. And I mean, I, I, I think if there's going to be an election, it should be asking the politicians, why is this going on? But anyway, I, I don't think, unfortunately, people are just going to laugh at the football people at the moment and say, well, you can't manage the money. That's why you're not getting any. And, and, and that's unfortunately is, is quite a job. I'm, I'm not even sure if we're the laughing stock of the football world. I haven't seen too much international coverage of this. Um, That's looking what I mean. at the UK, like, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I haven't heard any, uh, other than Ireland, I haven't yeah. heard anybody really kind of making a big deal. But I'm just what I mean is like, they're probably looking at it just going like, yeah, I, I, it hasn't become too much of an international story. It hasn't been in the UK papers. It hasn't been on Sky News. I presume it hasn't gone further afield. I wouldn't be checking mm, I, German or French or Spanish papers. However, it's it's a front page story here in all the newspapers. And really, we should be on the back pages. And it's also a major news story, as opposed to that's being been a sports ongoing story. It's an ongoing news right, story, yeah. yeah. And I mean, uh, but then you even look at the Mark Tighe and you buy yesterday's Sunday Times. And uh, yeah, you see the front page main story. You go into page five and you see Shawnee Fitzpatrick of Anglo-Irish Bank fame is building this massive house. And he was meant to be bankrupt and a bloody joke. And uh, anyway, that's nothing to do with football, I suppose, but it just shows what's going on in this country and what people get away with. Yeah, it's, and, it's, all, yeah. it's all, you know, corruption and, and so on. But uh, what does it mean, I suppose, for, for, for grassroots football? Like, and, and what I mean is, you look at, the, and there's incredible work at Underage, as you mentioned. Um, you look at our Underage structures, you know, one of our p most up-and-coming promising player comes on for... Spurs the other day, yeah. Jose Mourinho gives him his debut, gives him the match ball. We'd, we'd be speaking about Troy in a separate video, but you know Aaron Connolly, eighteen, playing in the Premier League. I think he's eighteen. I'm not sure he's nineteen anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, two teenagers um, that have started. Uh, Mark Mark Travers, they had back end of last season with Bournemouth. These are all you know teenagers that are starting in the Premier League, which hasn't happened in so long. You know, no. I suppose uh, together, um, I you know, I, and I just look at the under seventeen Euros. That was a huge success. Um, mm. You look at the under seventeens just qualify. Or the under seventeens now just qualified for an under nineteens tournament. I think it's this summer. Um, the under nineteens had a very successful time with the. Armenian uh, Euros. Yeah, we got to the, the semi-finals. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, maybe for other than a couple of dodgy suspensions to Afal um uh, and a couple of other players, we maybe had, could have go, gone on to the final yeah. there. Um, the under-21s, absolutely flying. And there's a good crop of League of Ireland and players that are playing in, with English clubs that are either championship or in the Premier League. And as I say, there's players now breaking into the teenagers breaking into the the under or sorry the senior international team now. You know O'Hara, Travers, Troy Parrott, Leo Connor, um, uh, 
Aaron Connolly. Yeah. You know, there's a good few coming through, through, through the ranks there, and that's all work done by under, under yeah, the and I mean, as well it, as uh, obviously uh, the academies that produced them. It has been the academies, and we've also started all the, the underage leagues in the League of Ireland. We just had the under 13s and the under 15s this year. The 17s and 19s have been going for a few years. I, I mean, that all takes investment, and that all takes money, and it has to come centrally. If you take the underage, uh, we play something like over 200 international matches a year and in many ways we for, for men's and women's and, and only about 10 of those I mean that's what the average 10 or 10 or 11 12 whatever the senior team play only about 10 of those generate revenue and the senior men's team I mean everything else is a cost or women's team is a cost or under 21s is a, is a cost. I mean, you got all the travel, you got 17s, 19s. I mean, okay, we, we, we've had some good crowds at the under 21s, but a lot of people are free in the season ticket, and even then, people are paying a five or in. That's not going to go very far when the under 21s had to travel to Armenia last month. Yeah, and there was um, a big fuss made about the travelling. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they had to go. I, I know there was a big fuss made on, on them going on, on scheduled flights now. Uh, I don't know if we were ever going to be chartering a plane and the cost of that for for the under 21s or underage sides. I yeah. mean, I know the women's team were on the Ryanair to to Greece as well to to Athens. But with you, yeah, we'd be on the way back. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> it sounds glamorous when you say you flew with the team, but uh, <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but that's probably a fact of life. I mean. Uh, they're, and they, they also, um, I, actually another thing on that game was RT wanted to televise the game, uh, and they did televise the game, which was great to see, but they wanted to show it in the evening, but the, the, the Greeks w weren't willing to play it in the evening because it would cost them another night's hotel for their team. So, I mean, it's, it's not just our association has to, to worry about costs. But, um, no, but my point is we've 200... 200 interna international matches a year. There's significant cost. The a, a lot of other countries, especially a lot of countries our size, don't play as many of those friendly matches. So we might send the under 17s to to go to to Switzerland, Austria, Poland to play two games, and they'd send people here. There's hotel costs. There's buses. There's all sorts of costs incurred by that. And, and unfortunately, that's the. the this kind of thing has the potential to suffer. So we've been in four of the last five UEFA Under-17 championships. We're in the elite phase, going to Scotland in March to hopefully qualify for five out of six, and we have a really good chance. Um, 19s were in the semi-finals in Armenia of the UEFA. I mean, who else was in that semi-finals? Portugal, Spain, um, actually I can't even think, was it France? Anyway, you're talking about major European nations. Um, who and produce top quality talent the whole time. Who, exactly, who produce, and we, we've been competing with them at underage. We've more than been punching above our weight in recent years. And unfortunately, and that shows with the under 21s now, I mean, they have a great chance of qualifying for the finals for the first time ever. Typically, we have done well in the past at under 17, 19 or 16 and 18 as it used to be and been poor at under 21 level. Yeah, stagnated um, at 21s. Stagnated a bit. Maybe in the case of like Robbie Keane and Damien Duff never got ready to play under 21s or, um, or certainly very little if they did. Um, so... We we are seeing seeing the the benefits of investment in football, and that's going to suffer. I mean, and you go back to my points about the RFU and the GA. I mean, if a youngster is and and typically, I mean, these days the talented sports people, many of them can throw their hand at any sport. There certainly will be more money there for somebody to play rugby or, or to, 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 to play Gaelic games and that could be that could be tempting for people um, they, they can they'll have the money to run programs that we unfortunately won't have and we're probably depending on so much of the the reach of football and I, I know there's a big we have a big advantage in football is the global game it is the game that people actually naturally play and naturally watch um, 
I might not be too happy sometimes that it's Liverpool and Man United people's support rather than uh, Dundalk or Shamrock Rovers, but unfortunately that that is the reality. And I mean, there's well, I think massive that comes interest down to you know again, you know the massive amount of TV coverage that the Premier League gets rather than our own leagues. Yeah, there is, and it's so easy to go over to games as well. There's so many people over there. But I mean, but having said that, I mean the interest in the likes of Liverpool and Man United does get kids playing football, whether it, it's in Monaghan or Cork or Kerry or Wexford, and. I mean, if you look at where where all our underage players are coming from, they're coming from every corner of the country at the moment. Yeah, and and that's and that's great to see. But um, just kind of lastly, do you think it's crucial that we qualify now for for your twenty twenty? I with do. All this debt and everything else, and I suppose the country needs a lift um, without putting too much pressure on the players because they know that what they have to do anyway. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't need to tell them what what they need to do. Uh, but yeah. I, I've actually always said it's crucial we qualify with us hosting the games. It's it's a massive opportunity with the games here in Dublin. It's going to be some party. So e- even before the, the announcements last week, it, it's even more crucial now because it really is dark days at the moment for Irish football. It really needs a lift. Um, and if we could win the two playoffs in March... It would give such a lift. It would give such a boost. It would get get the whole country back talking in a positive, uh, with a positive message about Irish football. We'd be all over the back pages and, and probably the front pages, but for a positive news story. Um, the other thing it, it's absolutely crucial is sponsorship. We've unfortunately lost the the, the three sponsorship. There's the, the FEI brand is is pretty toxic at the moment. It's going to be very difficult to attract new sponsors. And even if we attract new sponsors, it's probably not going to be at the level that previous sponsors had been paying. Now, if we qualify for the finals, suddenly it's a whole different ball game. Sponsors are going to want to be associated with that. I think it'll be a much easier job. If I was the FAI, I'd, I'd nearly be holding off for, unless there's a good deal, at least hold off till April and see if we qualify. Well, are, the deal runs with three till July. Yeah, so, so, they, so they will be the sponsors for the Euros, but to sign a new deal, I'm sure it would involve a lot of exposure. Even if the deal doesn't start till July, they would still get quite a bit of publicity. They'd be yeah, involved in the Euros, program or programs or whatever. And uh, so I, I think we'd be in a far better situation to track sponsors come next April if if we qualify for the Euros, not to mind the lift it's going to be. Also, if you look at the teams that are in the draw, I mean, Poland and Sweden, uh, obviously Spain game would be in Bilbao if we qualify, but Poland and Sweden are coming to Dublin. They're, they're They're two decent sides, but they're also very beatable sides. I think we would have a chance. They're probably, arguably, probably better than us, but we'd certainly have a chance. But also, the atmosphere is, would be absolutely fantastic. You would The Aviv is a guaranteed sellout as it is at this stage, even if we're not in it, but hopefully it'll be full of fans in green and white. And uh, yeah, so I think it's absolutely crucial from a whole number of aspects that we qualify. And we've got one and hopefully two massive games coming up in March. Yeah, and uh, we're going to do some more videos on um, a couple of other players uh, in the team as well. So make sure you check them out. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments as always. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, give us your thoughts in the comments. Uh, where do you think we go from here? Um, thanks for watching and we'll speak to you soon.